The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. You know, Jimmy pulled out. I kind of moved go. down. Yeah, I moved down a little bit. And next thing I know, I'm just getting turned in the left rear. So, um, yeah, just aggressive. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, Jimmy does that a lot at these tracks, so it's unfortunate. Um, you know what else Jimmy does a lot at these tracks, Paul? He wins at these tracks. <laughs> How many races has Paul Menard won on a restrictor plate track, James? Uh, no, none. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to episode 95 of the Super Speedway <laughs> Podcast, recorded Thursday, February 14th, 2019. Hey, it's Valentine's Day. I'm your host, Eric Young. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. Uh, James, I know, big Paul Menard fan uh, on the other end Boy. of the line here. So uh, what would you think of Mr. Menard's comments there? I always thought, like, boy, he, that guy just never talks enough. And then he opened his <laughs> mouth, and I thought, eh, go back to the way things used to be. <laughs> right, right. I mean, this guy. Come on. <laughs> Paul Menard. It's kind of hard to call out the seven-time champ. I mean, now, that being said, we're recording this tonight on Thursday night, Valentine's Day night. We are... As we're recording this, we're between the two, uh, uh, what are they, the Gander Outdoors, Gander RV duels. Um, and we've we've seen the first race, and Jimmy took out Kyle Busch in the first race in a very similar situation. Um, although a little bit more blatant, Jimmy slid up the track and got into Kyle and spun Kyle. And Kyle wasn't happy with him after the race. So, I don't... Well, at least Kyle is in the same... Uh on the same street as Jimmy in right. the neighborhood. That's true. Paul Menard's in a different country. That's true. Um, I guess before we get into this, cause we're, we have a tendency to do this where we start discussing the middle of a race and then don't talk about yeah. the actual race. So what we're talking about, of course, is the advanced auto parts clash last Sunday um, at Daytona international speedway. The first race race, I say in quotes of, of the year, uh, the non points race that, well, you qualify for it. However, they come up with it this, this year. Um, and so, uh, Jimmy Johnson gets the win at the last lap pass uh, slash wreck of Paul Menard and 95% of the field uh, going into turn three with the rain starting to come down. Um, the race gets to rain short and Jimmy Johnson back to victory lane. And that leads us to where we are, which is the controversy with the wreck. And my personal opinion of it is, so I'm not going to claim that I have any experience racing a race car, but I have played the simulators and all these guys talk about how great, how realistic the simulators are and everything. And even if you just go with playing on the PlayStation, but you know, doing the iRacing thing or, or NASCAR 2003 or one of the simulators back in the day and using the wheel, you, I mean, shoot, pass a guy on the highway going 75. And sometimes if you, if you try to, let's try to get, try to get that close, try to get two inches away from somebody at 75 miles an hour and tell me how straight you keep your car. Now do it at 200 with the wind yeah. pushing these things around. So I didn't personally, I didn't think Jimmy went up. I didn't think Menard went down. I just think they came together coming to the checkered flag. I do not James. I don't think you've seen the Kyle Busch incident. They're not even the same thing. It's it's completely different. And Jimmy has said that he doesn't know what's happening, what's causing his car to slide up into people. Um, Jimmy seems to be really confused a lot of stuff this car does <laughs> at restrictor plate tracks the past few years. But uh, it, it, it's a race and wreck, man. You're coming down. this. They, these guys all knew they were coming to the end of the race. It was starting to rain. We knew what the forecast was like. It's, a, it's an exhibition race. NASCAR is not going to de- delay it multiple hours to dry the track. Once it rains, it's done. We've already been on the track twice or been on pit road twice or three times at this point. This race is over when this caution comes out. So they're all racing for the win. Um, I think it's a race and accident. And now I've talked enough. It's your yep. turn, James. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's what it is, man. It's, it's just racing. And I saw Twitter, like everybody freaks out about these accidents. <laughs> and I'm like, NASCAR and NBC had a, had a tweet that I retweeted and didn't know what to do with. <laughs> And I was just like, what are we doing? You want to penalize? They're asking, should Jimmy Johnson be penalized? Oh, my God. And I'm NASCAR like, and NBC said that? Yes. Oh, my God. I'm I had like, a lot of respect for those people, but not so much after that. What are you doing? What are we doing? <laughs> They're just racing. It's a clash. There's no points. They wreck. Right. That's what you do. You got to take the – I don't know, man. I don't know. It just It's frustrating. And I don't want to hear Paul Menard whining. Angry. I was angry. <laughs> 
and now I'm over it because <laughs> it's just the clash. It's, it's just a it's just a fun race. It's just a race, and it, well, no, this one wasn't much fun, but it's supposed to be a fun race, and everybody's whining and unless ridiculous. one of these guys does the thing that everybody does with their video game the first time they get it, and comes out on pit road off a of pit road, turns around and goes backwards down the track and crashes head on into the front of the field. You can't blame anybody for a wreck at a restrictor plate track. Yeah, it just happens. You just can't. And, at 200 miles an hour, you just can't. Yeah, and Chase Elliott had the same thing kind of happen to him during practice for the Clash. when And, and he basically said, he, you know, they, when you side draft, these cars seem to be pulling themselves together. Yep. And it's just, you know, it's just a racing deal. It's, restri- it's the last restrictor plate go around we're ever going to have. So hopefully, yep. you know, hopefully things are a little different when we get to Talladega here. Well, and, the, but, and I think this story kind of covers up two bigger stories. And one of them you're kind of hinting at here that thank God, this is the last race with this package because so far we've seen a lot of single file racing up at the yeah. top of the track. Um, basically the first duel tonight, it was single file through the entire race. They had the caution. They, start to get double file. They went three wide for about two laps and then they went back to single file. They did it all the way until the last lap coming down the back stretch. Um, this is, right. we're not, I, my opinion is we're not going to see quite the same on Sunday because it's a much bigger race and there's more to it and all that. Um, and it, you know, hopefully it'll be warmer. Hopefully the track will be slick and it'll make for better racing, but we're going to see this. We're going to see a good chunk of this race with a bunch of cars running single file. We saw it at Talladega at the end of the season last year. And Talladega was one of the worst restricted plate races we've seen this package. I, you know, I want to be optimistic. I I've, I've said multiple times, I'm going to be, be optimistic this year. Now I'm going to sit here and get down on things, but this package cannot be gone soon enough. And I just don't get the decision to run this package for the biggest race of the year. I don't understand why yeah. you wouldn't come out with a new package at Daytona. Why, why run one more race? I don't get it. Yeah. I- yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I thought maybe we should just be – but maybe they didn't know what they were going to quite do yet by the time it was time to make that decision. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. know. I, th- I feel like they should have been able to. But, um, yeah, and one thing that worries me too is uh, you, you mentioned Talladega in the fall, and these teams seem to know – it's almost like they're stealing that Stuart Haas idea mm-hmm. last year where they tag-teamed the whole field and nobody could do anything with them. Yep. I wonder if – we're going to see something similar in the 500. You hear, you hear these guys talking about it and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering how that's going to look on the big show because Paul Menard led this whole thing. Right. You know, he, he basically could have run it wire to wire if he wouldn't have been, you know, challenged at some point. If he wouldn't have gotten wrecked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what I, all I could think about watching that race is 2011 was the first year where we really did started doing the tandem drafting. And NASCAR was, everybody was so outraged over this tandem racing. NASCAR had to change it. NASCAR changed it. We went through all that trouble to create this. And I would so much rather have it. First of all, I didn't have a big problem with the tandem racing. I did miss the pack racing, but kind of knew that we'd never get the pack racing back the same way again. And we haven't, we really haven't. We've never had that pack racing package that we had back when Earnhardt and Earnhardt Jr. were, knew how to run it. You know what I mean? It's, it's just yeah. never gone back to it. And I, I take tandem racing back any second right now. Yeah. It's just been kind of ugly. Just for the record, the, the motors are fired at, uh, for Gatorade duel number two. Ah, nice. Yeah. Um, I missed yes. it. I missed we should it. Mention Harvey, Kevin Harvey, Kevin Harvey did win Gatorade duel number one. Yes. In a single pot. Yep. Mess. So. Yeah. The, 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 if I'm not mistaken, Field One had a lot more heavy hitters than than the second duel, right? Yeah, there were quite a few in there. Uh, a lot of the guys that you expect to do well, and and uh, and yeah, Bush, Truex, yep, all those guys, yeah. So the the couple of them tried to make a move at the end. Um, actually, Menard tried to make a move at the end. Stenhouse didn't go with them, and there was a little bit of double file racing, but it was for second, third. Harvick just pretty much, uh, you know, clean sailing to the wind. So, yep, doing Harvick stuff. Yep. Um, the other big story I think that we missed as a result of all this controversy is there was a change made at the end of last season. And that was Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson were split up. Chad Knauss went to be the crew chief of William Byron and Jimmy Johnson got a new crew chief in Kevin Mendering for his car. And everybody wondered how it would work out. 
Well, Pretty William well. Byron is on the pole for the Daytona 500, and Jimmy Johnson won his first race of the year. So I'd say, yeah, I think I think there might have been a good choice there. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're trying to one-up each other. Like, <laughs> right. Chad Knauss comes out and, and, you know, he's like, hey, Jimmy, I can do this. And then Jimmy's like, hold my beer. Yeah. Goes and wins the clash. <laughs> So I think that's the bigger story. And and Hendrick is, has pretty much dominated the, the pole position in the front row. Yeah, they got at, good at single car speed at yeah. Daytona. That's for sure. But they, when, they always, always clean up. William Byron on the pole. He kept it clean in his duel. So as long as everything goes good through practice the rest of the weekend, he will be He'll starting on the pole. So Yeah, fast piece. Yep, yep. So very cool to see those guys having some su- success already. Um, I think we're going to see more of it this year. That's all I'll say. <laughs> ah, there you go. Um, so any, anything else about the race that we want to talk about? We've got a story here in a second that still revolves around the clash, but anything else about the race specifically that's uh, worth nothing, talking about? Nothing about the race. I think it's kind of interesting that 17 out of 20 cars got in a wreck, but yeah. other than that, it's nothing really more to say. I mean, NASCAR did what they could. It was a crappy day. The rain fell, it kept falling at the worst times. That didn't help the the single file racing at all because every time you know every time people got comfortable it rained again and it was back to back to the beginning so so anyway kevin harvick called on his happy hour show which is now during the day um during the weekend of sirius xm um he called for the ending of the clash and i wanted to talk about this on this podcast because suddenly after a crappy clash this week everybody is wanting this race gone and I think it's funny that, you know, anybody wants any race gone, to be honest. I just, I don't get this whole thing. Um, but one bad race, the Clash has been good in the past. Um, I guess before we get into some of the arguments of it, James, I wanted to hear your opinion on this. What is your thought on the Clash? Is there still a place for the Clash or is it something that we need to scrap? Of course. Why would we want to get rid of it? Right. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, no, it's, I mean, it's the first time cars are on the track. It's exciting. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's tough. You know, I, I get where Harvest come from. We're tearing up a lot of race cars. and Who cares? <clears throat> well, you know, but the Who sport. Who cares if we're tearing up race cars? The I, fans I'm shouldn't care Devil's about that. No, but I'm, play, <laughs> no, I'm know, just playing I devil's know. advocate. I know. He's... We, we're in a different financial state of the sport and tearing up race cars means a little bit more you know, than it used to maybe during the, you know, during the heyday. Right. Um, even the big teams, it matters, you know, Stuart Haas racing has four cars in a, in a pileup at Daytona. That's gonna, that's going to cost a lot. So, uh, I see where he's coming from, but you know, I don't know why they just don't shorten up a week instead of making this thing a whole, you know, two week show. Why don't they just bunch everything together? You know, maybe start the clash on a Wednesday and then, you know, then you then you go qualifying trucks, Xfinity Cup and you're on to the next week. I don't know why they don't do, do something similar to like that. But um, other than that, leave it alone. Yeah. When they it's, when they did the, the bash of the beach or whatever the heck they call it when they raced on the backstretch at Daytona, it made sense to have this whole week long thing. But now, I mean, I'm sure Volusia and, and New Smyrna get a lot of uh, attendance from NASCAR fans and stuff that you know we don't see it because it's not televised on you right. know, the regular channels but they're right. they're getting action during those off days whereas you know we don't the nascar cars aren't but those guys are out racing at those tracks yeah. so maybe there's a place for it because of that um i listened to got a chance to listen to a good chunk of dale jr's podcast this week dale jr download which um they've revamped a little bit this year they're going to be doing more of it on N- nbc uh sports as well and if you don't listen to Junior's podcast, he's got a lot of good insight. And Junior's not afraid to talk. And Junior basically said, again, why in the world are we talking about getting rid of a race? That's insane. And yeah, his solution, which I really like, is, first of all, the caution flag in the clash is stupid. Why do we have a caution flag in the clash? Nobody, nobody is going to race before that caution flag. Why? Why would you? You're going to run single mm-hmm. file. You're going to bide your time. You're not going to do anything stupid. The only way something's going to happen is if somebody has a mechanical failure that causes an accident. Otherwise that's it. You're riding around until that caution. There's no incentive to be leading at that caution. There's no incentive to be anywhere, but on the track and on the lead lap. So get rid of the caution and do it like it used to be. Take, take the pole winners. That's it. Cause right now 
the way they come up with this field is stupid. Let's let's just I, seriously though, it, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Give it to the poll winners. Run the poll winners. That's it. If you really need to throw the throw the past winners of the race in, but I don't think you need to. I think just run the poll winners and do a twenty lap shootout like they used to. Yeah, and just be done with it. I liked it. Twenty laps, yep. quick race. Do it on qualifying day like they're doing now. Make the qualifying show as much as right. most of us really don't care that much about it, I don't think. That's the big deal for Daytona for that weekend. Make that the big show. Have this as be a fun thing to get everybody excited. That's it. Right. Your yeah. clash is fixed. And, and The tw- last and, 20 laps are all that matters anyway. Yeah, it's all matters of the Daytona 500 too. So. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's just change that one too. Yeah. I don't want to be um, – I don't want to be – you know, I, I feel like everybody's trying to fix NASCAR. Right. And, and I, you know, I don't want to I don't want to try to fix NASCAR myself. And, and I don't want to be on the other side of I don't want to be screaming and yelling to fix stuff. Right. If there's something that really needs to be fixed, then let's look at it. This is not yeah. something that we need to be worried about right now. This form, t- the format can be adjusted. I just honestly, instead of doing the 20 lap thing, let's just get rid of the caution. Let the caution happen naturally. That's it. Yeah. If there's yeah. no caution, let, there's no caution. Then just race them. Yeah, just race. Drop yep. the flag and go. Yep. But yeah. So, there you go. Okay. That works. Fixed. There. We fixed it. Yeah. Um, Nobody else has to do a podcast about fixing NASCAR. We just took care of it. There Thank you. you. Go. There you go. All You're set. welcome. You're welcome, America. If you haven't gotten a chance to listen to Dale Jr.'s podcast, listen to it this week. He talks a lot about um, about the, the kind of new look of NASCAR and Jim France and what he's bringing and just – how NASCAR is trying to go a little bit more back to its roots. Pretty interesting. Really good story. Uh, it's fun to listen to. I didn't get to listen to the Tony Yuri stuff, but Tony Yuri senior and junior are both on the show as well. So again, if there's, if you're subscribed to a few podcasts, you know, subscribe to ours first and then, uh, I don't know, yeah. subscribe to juniors. Hopefully if you're li- yeah. Hopefully if you're listening, you're subscribed, <laughs> right? And, uh, yeah. Subscribe to juniors, subscribe to NASCAR and NBC podcast with Nate Ryan and probably Gluck's podcast, Jeff Gluck's podcast. Um, those ones will be yeah, pretty good mix there, for you. There is, well, if we're talking about podcasts, you need to, to download. <laughs> um, please go and download Positive Regression. Okay. That is, a, yeah, it's a new NASCAR podcast. Uh, that's very good. Huh. I'm not aware of that one. I'm going to have to add that to my yep. list right now. That's uh, David, David Smith from Motorsports Analytics and okay. Alan Kavana from uh, Fox Sports. All right. Uh, they go deep on uh the analytics of NASCAR and it's really, really good stuff. Just what I needed. Another podcast. I know. Yep. I was really hurting for that. I, need to find I know me too. Yeah, me too. Uh, I was, I was not going to subscribe. And then I thought I listened to the first two. And I'm like, Oh, this is really good information. I'm going to plug myself back in, add it to the list. There you go. All right, James, the next one is yours. Take it away. Ah, yes. So, uh, I'll make a long story short. <laughs> I, there was a time where Jimmy Johnson was my Paul Menard <laughs> currently. And I never thought that I would find myself like considering to myself to be a fan of Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> but the man's won me over. Yeah. And now he's announced that he's running the Boston marathon, which <laughs> is awesome. Go Jimmy go. I am rooting for this guy, man. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I love endurance sports. Jimmy loves endurance sports. I love NASCAR. Jimmy's a, the greatest driver of all time. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> How many miles did he run the day of the, of the clash? The day of the clash, yeah, he did a half marathon, <laughs> uh, 13.1 miles. Uh, so did Jamie McMurray, by the way. And Jamie McMurray beat him in the, uh, in the half. So, <laughs> But Jimmy's a well-known athlete. I just wanted to shout it out. I thought that was really cool that he announced this week that he's been – you know, and I and I follow Jimmy on this app called Strava, and it's an app where you can track your workouts and there's GPS maps and things. And I had noticed that Jimmy was logging a ton of like running miles, and usually whenever Jimmy posts, it's biking miles. I'm like, what's he up to? And then this <laughs> week he announced he's running the Boston Marathon. I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. That's why he's running 70 miles a week. Nice. So uh, kudos to him. It's it's a really hard challenge. He's going to run the day after the spring Richmond race. So I can't, and I've run a marathon man and I cannot imagine. I can't, I can't fathom that he's going to drive 400 miles and then the next day do what he's about to do to his body. Right. 
ridiculous to me. He's he's an he is like the epitome of a NASCAR is is NASCAR drivers are athletes. Speaking of Jimmy Johnson, uh, James is one of his favorites. Uh, Marty Smith wrote an article about Jimmy Johnson. November November nineteenth, two thousand thirteen was when it was published. ESPN dot com. Uh, the greatness of Jimmy Johnson, and it was I such a great story about just why Jimmy Johnson is so awesome. All right, here we go. Hold on. We're going green for the duel. The duel number two. 2018. Thanks to Fox Sports for the audio. Everything, yes, everything stops for going green. Green flag. 60 laps, 150 miles to set the outside lane for the Daytona 500. All right. Um, just yeah. something about Mike Joy, by the way, <laughs> that just calms me. Yeah. And Darren Walsh didn't do the boogity boogity for that. Not for the, not for the, the uh, duel. No, maybe they maybe they got rid of it this year. Oh, something oh. to keep our eye on. Put a footnote on that. that we we'll, we'll, let's revisit that on uh, next week when we rec- recap the five hundred. That would be so did. nice. I'm gonna have a hard if I if I like trail off or anything. It's because I have it on the TV next to me or on the iPad next to me. So <laughs> multitasking. Yeah. Multitasking. I'm, and I'm not good at that at all. So anyway, this article, I'll put the, the link in the show notes. Um, excellent article if you've never read it. it. It is all about the greatness that is Jimmy Johnson and uh, and why he's such a great person. And it was really cool, a real inside look at the guy who is the seven-time champ. So very cool. Yeah. Check it out if you haven't. All right. Uh, that's it for news. Really, there's not a whole lot going on because they're in Daytona. Yeah, we're in Daytona. Race. Yeah. So, yeah, we got, we got racing. Again. Yeah, and like right now on my iPad, right next to me. Um, we do have a, do we care though, James, and I'm going to give you this one. Cause you put this in there and you're going to have to tell me about it because I didn't click on the link yet and read it. Oh, no, so. that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so NASCAR and it's ever, um, I, I guess never, never ending research to get a hold of the next generation, the next demo, the, the next demographic of NASCAR fans <laughs> has partnered with Barstool Sports. And I don't know how many listeners, but Barstool is pretty popular for the, I guess 35 and under crowd, the millennials, I guess. Right. Um, they're a little bit more risky. They, they post some sketchy stuff from time to time. They, they claim to be a sports organization, sports news outlet, but they are, uh, they, they don't take it as seriously. Um, so anyway, so Barstool and NASCAR, they've struck up an agreement to, um, NASCAR is going to do some sponsoring, uh, they're spending between 10 and 20 million dollars in advertising through this year. That's it, 2019. And uh, Barstool's going to be doing some some covering some NASCAR sports. Going to be coming uh, to the track a couple of times. And um, man, I don't know. It's interesting to me. I, how how familiar are you with Barstool? I should ask before we dive in a little bit deeper. I know the name. <laughs> okay, very good. That's very, that's very pretty good. much it. It's just not your typical. It's not your typical outlet that you would want. I, well, let me let me rephrase that. Want is is not the right way to say that because, you know, other sports that uh, that spend their time with barstool include you know MMA. So right, you know, is that is that the same type of fan that we're you know we're pulling in for NASCAR races? I guess I'm not sure, but um, just an, an interesting uh, just interesting deal to me. I I just was kind of surprised by it. I, it it's Definitely a non-traditional route. Um, and I thought it was kind of a, I guess, kind of a good thing too. So, I will see. We'll see how it plays out. I'm kind of, I, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see how Barstool is gonna cover this. Right. So are they gonna, you know, are they gonna bring the skimpy girls to the track? Are they gonna have the sketchy posts on Instagram? Um, but if if you're not familiar with them, check them out on social media. Um, probably don't do it at work. <laughs> <laughs> it would be that would be my suggestion. Um, my, yeah, but it's interesting. My personal opinion on it is if it's another outlet covering NASCAR and it might do something positive, good. Um, yeah. We do need to get the younger audience watching the sport. I think we've learned that over the past few years that NASCAR tried too hard to get those younger eyes and abandon the, you know, the, the diehard fans. And I think NASCAR is realizing that and trying to steer back. But they still need to make these efforts to get the product in front of the younger eyes too. Um, we shouldn't change our product for the younger eyes necessarily, but we should find a way to get it in front of them. Um, James, I just wanted to give you a little recap here um, of the uh, Gatorade duel number two. We're 18 laps in and it took three laps for them to go single file. And then they were single file for a while. And to the point that NASCAR was, or that 
Fox was concentrating on the Brendan Gaughan, Joey Gase race for the transfer position. For quite a while, they were racing side by side, but everybody else was single file. And now we're back single file after pit stops. It was a little exciting for a little bit. So that's where we're at. Racy. Brendan like, Gaughan's Gaun, yeah. leading, though. He hasn't pitted yet. So go, Brendan. Make that show, man. Yeah. So that's 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 your Gatorade Duel recap. Those of you guys listening probably already know what happened because I'm sure you watched the race. So anyway, uh, I think we're done with the news. We're done with all that stuff. Um, let's talk about the 2019 season. This is our prediction episode. Um, James came up with some uh, some predictions for us to jump on here for the uh, for the season. So James, I'm going to let you lead the way on this because it's yeah. all your deal. So what's, you know what what's your? Sh- well, go ahead. Well, you know what we should have did is we should have outsourced this, and I think maybe for the for future uh, stuff like this, I'm going to start outsourcing because I think idea. we're starting to get trying to get a few more followers. Yes. So, um, but anyway, so what what we decided to do was just take a look at the 2019 season and make ourselves look foolish. There you go. And do it do a few predictions. So, um, so I'll I'll kick it off. Uh, I and we'll go back and forth on who who picks first, and we'll we'll just have a little conversation with everyone. Okay. Uh, one, so one big gamble. So we have to pick something that is kind of way out there that we think is going to happen, or we would, or maybe we would put money on it to happen. Okay. So our buddy Todd, friend of the pod, uh, uh this is way back during the off season, had said that uh, I can't remember exactly how it came up, but it ended up with me saying that Matt Benedetto, yeah, he'll make the playoffs. <laughs> So, <laughs> so for my one big gamble, so if, if I was going to go put 50 bucks down, I was going way out there. Uh, De Benedetto wins a race for Levine Family Racing. What do you think of that? It's a good one. I know we've talked about it on the podcast before, but I got to stick to it, right? Right. I got to put De Benedetto in there, even though it's like a super big reach. There's no reason for this ever to happen. But why not? This one's tough because I've got a few. And none of them are like blockbusters to me. I think I'm going to go with the one that I think is the least likely. And I'm going to go against this in a few minutes when I make my picks. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with – this is out there, but it's not out there necessarily. Mine, my one big gamble is that Paul Menard – and I'm not doing this because you are irritated with Paul Menard <laughs> – Paul Menard makes the final four for Homestead. That's that's my Holy big gamble. Crap! <laughs> I wanted to go big, man. But you know, the my thing job is, just hit the floor. He's he's in a Ford. Um, you know, he's he's basically running a Penske car. Penske, we know what Penske's like. I we joke about Paul Menard, and I know you're not a fan of Paul Menard. I think his personality is terrible. Um. I don't think he's a bad driver. I don't think he's the greatest driver out there, but I don't think he's a bad driver. And I think, I think given, given the car he has, he could, he could steer himself into the playoffs and make a little bit of a run. Eric, you know what this sounds like? What's that? Many years ago when you and I were working together at the, <laughs> at the old Ogama County Herald, you had said to me, Dan Capet just going to win a race before it's all said and done. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what this. Sounds this has like. a lot better chance of happening. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I do agree with you on that one. It's um, I think he 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 just he's, I don't think he, I mean, he gets the final four. He's not winning the championship, and I don't final four is probably pushing it. Final and eight and maybe. And we're just making ridiculous gambles, right. So, right? That's that's the thing we're doing here. But yeah, I mean that's <laughs> he's that's got a, a big... car that could do it. That's true. It's just a matter of whether he can. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's in good equipment. I mean, he, he's he been fast in speed weeks. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, all the Fords are fast, but Paul Menard is not that far off of everybody else. He's he's right there. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he's been in the running in both races we've seen so far at Daytona. And we know Daytona doesn't tell us a whole lot, but it might tell us more this year than it ever has before with the new package. Maybe. So. Yeah, maybe. But, okay, there's there's my wild one. That, that'll. All right. I like to so, I like to surprise you. <laughs> that was really good. I so did not so let me one. just let me just jump on the other ones that I was thinking. Okay, one of them was <clears throat> I was gonna go. I was gonna say that Kyle Larson goes winless this year. Um, yeah, that would be 
that would be a shame if that happened again. It would be definitely. And then the but other this one new package, you know what? If he doesn't get it and get on board with this new package, this could be another like this could be another year. Yeah. And then the other one that I was thinking about, but I think it's less of a stretch than De Benedetto, and I didn't want to go less than you did, um, would be uh yeah. um Ryan Newman getting a win in the six car. Yeah, that's a, that's a gamble. It's a gamble, but it's I think it's less of a gamble than, than Benedetto. Yeah. So yeah, that's still a gamble. Yeah, I so, agree. But yep. but I like the Palminard one. So, and yes. I'm not going to pick him as one of my final four drivers later when we do this. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's right. That's right. This is our one big gamble. There that's you not, go. Doesn't mean that's not doesn't mean it's what we're going to believe. Twenty six laps in. Uh, Clint Boyer is now our leader, by the way. That boy, Clint. There you go. Get that uh, Storhaus uh, all second row right there. There you go. Gets it done. Yeah, Denny Hamlin's right uh, behind him. Actually, I tell you what, Hamlin's been trying stuff. Hamlin's been trying to make moves. He's been trying to dive down to the inside and make some passes. Hamlin's so. a really good uh, drafter, a really good restricted mm-hmm. plate racer. So yes. uh, none of that surprises me. He he's he's really good. Yep. All right, go ahead. Next one. Um, yeah. So team to watch. So let's. Uh, so teams that are not. I just a little bit of criteria. Oh. Like why why would we care? to pay extra attention to Joe Gibbs racing. They're going to be right in front of us all season long. So okay. is there a team, one of the underfunded teams that you're going to be looking at? Like, yeah, that team could take a leap, could take a step forward. Can I count Richard Childress racing in that group? Absolutely. You can. They've okay. got a new driver. They've got a lot of, they got a lot of stuff going on. I'm going Richard Childress racing for some reason. And maybe it's just because the only show I hear on Sirius anymore is the one that chocolate Myers is on. Um, for some reason, I just have good feelings about Richard Childress this year. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, Austin Dillon was a pretty good driver in the truck series. Yep. And if this yeah, package that's is, true. If this package is anything like the truck series, um, I mean, you, you know, and and if this package can help the the teams that you know have fallen off in past years come back towards the front, or you know, bring the front back to them, then why not? Yeah, why not? Richard Childress Racing. Right. And, and Daniel Hamrick's a pretty good talent. He's not, you know, he's not like next level talent or anything like that. But, um, you know, he's a rookie and maybe he surprises us and has a really good breakout rookie year. You know, Daniel Hemrick reminds me a little bit of Jimmy Johnson. He hasn't had the success in the other series, but he's been there. Yeah. Like he's been there. He just hasn't gotten the wins. And so he could very well come into the series and just all of a sudden do a Jimmy Johnson and suddenly he's this big contender. I mean, I'm not predicting he's going to be a seven time champion or anything like that, but he could really surprise us. So he could be yeah. what he could be what Childress needs. Yeah, he uh, he's got two top four finishes in the expanded series um, and overall points uh, d- doesn't have any wins, but he racked up a ton of top 10 finishes yep. um, over his time. Um, his 2018 season was really good. 16 top fives, 23 top tens. Um, and an average finish of nine. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, if that's if that's Jimmy Johnson kind of flying under the radar but putting up good numbers, I mean, that's that's right there. Right. So I like that. There you go. Uh, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to stick with a little bit of a theme. I'm not going to stick with the whole way through. Uh, <laughs> but I really want to see what Levine, 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 Levine. Levine Family Racing, yeah. I want to see what Levine can do now that they're in Toyotas, got a little bit of that Gibbs Alliance kind of taking uh, the place of Furniture Row a little bit. Um, I really want to see what that looks like. And I think that they are going to have an upwards trajectory. Um, maybe not a huge leap this year, but I really think, uh, I think they've made a driver upgrade De Benedetto's young, hungry, and not that Casey Kane was a bad driver, but Casey Kane was having some health issues that he didn't even realize he was having. So, um, I'll take the young and hungry guy with a new team. Um, that is looking to kind of take a few steps. What do you, what do you think about Levine this year? I'm not seeing it. I just, I, I guess I need to see it proven to me. I, I, and you make a good point about Casey Kane was certainly not in his prime going over there. Um, but I had higher expectations last year than what they turned out. And Mm -hmm. I I guess I need him to show me something to get on the Levine family racing bandwagon. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. Last year was definitely not, um, probably not the year that they wanted. I think they wanted to take a bigger step forward, but Casey Kane just wasn't at that time. He just wasn't the guy that yeah. was going to get it done. Um, so right. It's, it's, I just, I think, I think they're going to get a lot of good help from Joe Gibbs racing to that. will help them get it up. 
off the ground a little bit better. Yeah, it's possible. And I think Benedetto is a good driver. I don't think he's, I don't think he's a contender by any means. But I think I yeah. think he'll be a good driver. And yeah, we'll see. I I think I, I look. I I hope they do well. I want to see more contenders in the Cup Series. So, um, I want to see some yeah. of these younger t- teams, these underfunded teams, become better funded teams. And you know, you can start it this weekend with a good run at Daytona that can help fund a pretty good chunk of your season. So heck yeah, absolutely. Get a, get a top five at Daytona. That'd be great for Levine. So for some reason I'm riding the the Benedetto train and I did not expect (laughs) that I was going to be doing that. So I'm glad (laughs) you are because I have not boarded that train. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, so for our next question, our next prediction, uh, and two might not be enough, but we'll, we'll say two, we'll say two, uh, pick two drivers, that made the playoffs last year who are not getting back in in 2019 and two drivers who move up into the playoffs this year. And you're first. And I'm going first. And I was taking a look at this earlier. So between 2017 and 2018, there was a five driver drop off, which that's, that was pretty big. One of those drivers retired. And I'm looking at guys who are going to fall out of the top 16, and I really only see oh, – gosh, and I don't even know who's going to re- – boy, I, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you don't know what you're going with because I am i don't either, man. So if I had – if okay, gun to my head, I had to take two guys out of this thing. I'd have to go with Austin Dillon and Alex Bowman. Those would be my two guys who are coming out. Okay. Two guys going in. I've got three dri- well, three drivers and ones on the list because I picked them to win a race. Um, Matt Benedetto would be on the list because I had him in there, and then it's a battle between. For me, it's a battle between Daniel Suarez and um, and uh, William Byron, and I will go with Byron over Suarez. I just think Chad Knauss is too good at his job, and that Byron's too good of a talent. I think the two of them coming together might take them a minute. Um, but if, if we look at that truck series theory that's been thrown out there, uh, Byron was a pretty heck of a good truck series driver. So we'll see. Um, but those are my, those are my picks. Okay. <sighs> All right. I'm going to go Alex Bowman as well as a dropout. Um, hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Kurt Busch as well. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't think Kurt's in the role he's in to win a championship. I think he's in a role in the role he's in to help improve the 42 car personally Mm. and, Mm -hmm. and set that car up that one car up to be something too. Yeah. I think Kurt is in a, in a, you know, take care of this team mode, not a come in and win mode. Yeah. Yep, I like that one. And coming in, I am going to piggyback off of you, and I'm going to say William Byron. And I'm we not, like William Byron on this podcast. Yeah, I am not going to say Matt DiBenedetto though. Um, yeah, I'm going to say uh, who the heck was I going to say? Who was your other one? <laughs> I had Suarez. Suarez, my... that's right, sure. Suarez. I I find it hard to believe that Suarez is going to be in a Stuart Haas car and not make the playoffs. I I just. I think Suarez has enough talent and with that car under him and the fact that it seems like that team actually wants him there. Unlike the way it felt with JGR. I yeah. think, I think Suarez, I think you're going to see Suarez do the Joey Logano thing personally, I, not come out and win a championship, but he's going to come out and he's going to outperform in this car. Yeah. So I like it. There you go. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it makes too much sense. The Stuart Haas has been too good. Um, especially last year, you look at Eric Almirola and the leap he made. Uh, it's just a, it makes too much sense to not, you know, to not mention Daniel Suarez. He's, he's going to probably make some sort of leap. Yep. There we go. Okay. Next one. Uh, this is a yes or no. Yes. Will the rules package work? So I have a question before I answer this one. Yes. What is your definition of work? Is work think, just better than this past year? I mean, is work... I, or it, yeah, for me, working is creating entertaining racing, while also, um, I'm, I guess delivering on the promise, right? Okay. That's that's that the works. big thing. Delivering on the promise. We want to have closer racing. We want to have more excitement. 
Um, and it's, you know, does it doesn't work. Is it going to work? Okay. I don't know. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and then I'll explain. I'm going to say, fine. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Question mark. I like that. Perfect. So, so that's how I'm going to put it. No. <laughs> Um, let me explain. The reason I, I say it that way is that I think from second on back, this package is going to be awesome. I think it is going to completely change the way NASCAR races. I think it's going to create a ton more excitement. My concern is that we haven't seen that you can pass the leader. So that's where I'm worried about might be iffy. And if there's a lot of action in the back, and one guy leaves 300 of a 300 lap race. That isn't, that isn't a yes for me. So exactly. plenty of, plenty of racetracks deliver that already. Right. You can, you can go to any racetrack and see really good racing in the back of the pack, but at the leaders way out there, I am giving NASCAR the benefit of the doubt that the tapered spacer will fix this issue and that this will be a successful package. And if it's not, if, I, I honestly don't think we're going to have to worry about back in the pack, but the front of the pack is where I'm concerned. And I feel like if it's not, then NASCAR will tinker and try and find something that works yes. before the end of the season. So mm -hmm. in the end, I think, yes, maybe not in the very first iteration of it, but yes. So what do you think? I'm going to say, cause I, we did our cautiously optimistic podcast. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to say yes. Okay. Not a capital, not all caps. Yes. <laughs> not a question mark. Yes. Just a flat out, land yes this is going to work um my concerns are what if some of these teams start hitting on some handling things and start breaking away from the field we there's a lot of unknowns yet right. but i think i'm going to enjoy the journey and i think that's going to do uh i don't know i think i think i'm gonna like this thing by the end of the day so here's my thing with it so if I'm, i like it it's gonna it's a yes right i'm gonna go back to when i first heard about this i was super excited and then I let everybody talk negatively and bring me down and convince me that it wasn't a good idea. And I'm going back to forget what everybody else says. I think this is going to provide the racing I want to see. Yeah. So I like restrictor plate racing aside from the single file stuff that we're having right now. I, I love restrictor plate racing. So let's, let's do it. And in this, I think this is the best I said all along when they ran that tapered Spencer on the truck series. I want the truck series. I want the mm -hmm. truck series for 500 miles, and I think this package gives me that. So. Yep. All right. Here we go. There you go. Uh, so this one's let's tough. go. Yes, yeah, gonna be a tough one. <laughs> so if you had to, if you look at the entire schedule, what is going to be the best race of the year? All right. You get the first pick on this one. Good. Good. I do get the first pick on this one. Um, I'm not going to say the Daytona 500 or Homestead because okay. I think those can, those can be kind of easy, especially Homestead. Homestead has a chance to really be really great. I almost said uh, I almost picked Daytona as my worst. Yeah, Daytona could be your worst. But I've, I've <laughs> could changed, be your worst. I've changed my mind because I think the excitement of the ending of the Daytona 500 will make it not the worst race of the year. But anyway, yes. I'm getting ahead of myself. So go ahead. So I'm going to go really, really early in the schedule. Oh, man, you're and I'm still – this is going to be cautiously optimistic. <laughs> uh, can I say Atlanta? Okay. I'm going really early in the schedule. I'm going to go if, the same direction as you, but I'm not. If Atlanta. some of this stuff starts working, let, let's say Atlanta puts on this incredible show and it carries us through the season. We're going to look back on the first time we saw this package really race and that's going to be a landmark moment. So okay. it, it's for me, it's Atlanta. And then fans are going to be mad because we're going to have one Atlanta race here. <laughs> I saw the problem with Atlanta being the first race of this package because it's not though. It's not, but it, it is, but it isn't because it's not fully, right. not a fully formed version of the package. However, there's going to be a lot of those aspects for the record, 18 laps to go, 12 car, single file breakaway. There so, you go. It's still the qualifying up front though. The, uh, the qualifying races at Daytona have taken yet another exciting turn. All right. So I'm going to go the same direction as you in a way, because I'm going for a, a track that already has provided good racing that has some busted up asphalt that will make it handle better or make it more exciting of a race. And I'm thinking size wise and just, you know, we're running sort of a restrictor plate now. So the closest thing to a restrictor plate race without being Daytona or Talladega, and I'm going to go pretty early too. I'm going to go California. 
I think Auto Club Speedway will be our, our uh, yeah. race. So. That, I uh, like it. I don't really have much else to say about it. I, t- Talladega, or that track's Talladega. been putting on. <laughs> California's put on some great races. This past year was not great, um, but otherwise it's been awesome. And I think you put this arrow package on it, it's going to be excellent. So, I like it. Yeah, that, and that track's been putting on some good shows here for the last few years. So right. I thought about yeah. Michigan, but I don't think I don't think Michigan's going to cut it because the the track the it's the asphalt's still just not what it needs to be yet. And then Chicago Land seemed like an easy pick because Chicago Land was good last year. And come on, Chicago Land's been good one time and since it opened. So yeah, I, yeah. Is it really going to be that good again? I don't know. So I don't know. Yeah, that was that was a special moment. So all right, next one. Yeah, uh, worst race that you're going the opposite end of the spectrum. So if you're you're looking at the schedule, Eric, and you're thinking, I don't want to, I want to take that week off. Yep. So I am going to go with, and this is the one I picked. I wanted to make sure I had the race right. Um, like I said, I, I hinted at Daytona, but I think the excitement will create a good race there. Um, I kind of went back to think of what is one of the worst races on the schedule already, and this race will not be affected in any way by the package because it won't be run there. And I'm going mm-hmm. Sunday, July 21st, the Foxwoods Resorts Casino 301 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. <laughs> their, only day, their only date. Yep. Yep. Sorry, uh, New Hampshire just doesn't cut it for cup cars, man. It's just not a good yeah, track. It's been pretty, it's been pretty rough. It's so, been pretty rough. Lately. They and they've yeah. I give them credit. They've tried to make it good. And yep. they just it's just it's too flat. It's it's the Milwaukee mile and it's just not good for stock car racing. Put modifieds yeah. on there, excellent race every day of the week, but just mm-hmm. not the track for a cup car. Yes, I I like that. That's a good pick. Actually, that was not on my radar and I probably should have <laughs> I should have thought put put a little more thought into I, that one. I bet you I know where yours is going, but I'm not going to say it until you make your pick. Yes. Uh, so my, um, I'm going a little bit out on a limb. Okay. Maybe because know. we're not quite sure what's going to happen just yet, but I have a feeling NASCAR is going to screw it up somehow. <laughs> the All Star Race okay. is the worst race. Is the worst race on the schedule okay. every year. <laughs> yeah. That's. I, I thought maybe you'd go Indy. Yeah, Indy's well. Yeah, I've had my rants on Indy a few times. <laughs> I think this um, package will help Indy. Yes. Pocono is another question mark. Pocono might be a struggle too. Yeah, I was thinking Pocono is like I was thinking like spring or early Pocono, some early summer Pocono. Yeah. Um, but man, the All Star Race NASCAR always tinkers tinkers with something and it turns into a it just it just turns into crap. True. So True. I'm going All Star Race. They're, NASCAR will figure find a way. Even if this package is good, they will find a way to screw the whole thing up, and the All-Star Race is going to be a complete snoozer. Neither of us picked the Roval as the potential best race. Well, I think – I don't know if the Roval qualifies because it was so good last year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's it, – but I, I was trying to think of something that we wouldn't, uh, you know, we wouldn't quite pick either. I, I, w- I won't be surprised if it's a really good race at the Roval. However, this package takes off, and Atlanta is like an incredible race. That would that would take the leap for me. There you go. All right, next All right. one. This is a big one. <laughs> I'm gonna try to to tell, talk my final four briefly because I don't want to give away my champion. Our last question will be that who's gonna win the championship. <laughs> it's our annual uh, doofus sl- selection of the year. <laughs> All right, so final four for me. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, I'm gonna go with Rowdy. Kyle Busch, he gets in. I think he's an automatic block at this point in his career. Okay. Um, another guy I think is going to sneak in this year is Brad Keselowski. I think he's going to be good with this rules package. I like him to get in. And it's super hard for me to pick against Rodney and that four team with Kevin Harvick. So I've got to get them in. And if I'm going with one kind of a wild card because somebody usually sneaks in there that might not belong just yet uh it might be chase elliott's time i saw something in that guy last year that i was i've been waiting for it i've been waiting for chase elliott to um kind of make the leap in his career and i think i saw it last year so i'm gonna go those four okay kyle brad kevin and chase okay. so joey legano does not repeat for me all right. I am going to, part of my picks are going to be just because I don't want to pick the same thing as you. 
Um, and I'm still deciding as well. So I'm with you, Cowbush, Locke on this. Mm -hmm. He's in there. He's, yeah, he's the juggernaut. I'm also going to pick Chase Elliott because he is a definite pick for me. I, he was a pick for me last year. And then I'm going to go... I'm going to go way out on a limb with this one, James. Way out on a limb and say Joey, Joey, Joey Logano. Over ah, Brian. you like Joey Logano. Yep. I think Okay. I think Logano gets back in again. And then my number four is going to be the Jimmer. I'm you saying, are bumping Kevin Harvick I am out of I bumping the Kevin Harvick out of the final four, and that is a conscious decision. I don't know why. I just feel like. I so you're basically. I have no Stuart Haas silly. cars in the final four, which is I know that's probably that's a stupid scary. mistake. Kind of well, we may look back on that, and you might you could be right. I mean, they were killing it last year with the old rules rules package, so maybe they're going to struggle. Yeah, I think I think this I think Harvick is going to be the one that will probably be affected by this rule package the most. I think negatively. I, yeah. I like that you went completely – you went Harvick and Johnson going in the complete opposite directions of last year. Yep. I like it. All Something's right. Something's got to change, and Jimmy's hungry. So 2019 champion, James. Yes. This is it. So Do you I, flip? What's that? Do you want to flip for it? If you, I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to require you to have to go first. We could flip for it. Yeah, let's do that. Hold on. Hold okay, on. Okay, I've got a little – oh, oh, you got here, an app? I'll have Siri do it. I'll have Siri do it. Oh, oh Siri's going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm – I'm trying to think. I don't think I have Hey Siri. Okay. Hey, you, hey Siri. <laughs> Flip a coin. It's heads this time. Oh, we need to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just want to make sure it worked. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll go tails. I'll go tails never fails. Okay. Hey Siri, flip a coin. It's tails this time. Tails. It's all you, man. Ah. Okay, so I'm going to defer. I'm going to let you pick first. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you did this so I didn't have to pick first, you jerk. All right, I that's okay because I've got I've got my mind made up and I'm going out on a limb. I'm going to uh, now you know who I picked because I'm going out on a limb. Probably you know one of two that I'm going to pick. Um, yeah. I'm saying history is made this year. Eight time, eight, eight times? time champion Jimmy Johnson. I think he recovers from his okay. horrific season last year, gets himself into the final four and wins the 2019 NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series Championship. He rides off into the sunset. Yeah. I, you think Jimmy wins? He, he just says, I'm done. No, he's got two years left. Yeah. I think I think this two-year contract, and then he's done. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so for me, I'm not going out on a limb whatsoever. I think that this rules package is going to benefit one driver above all others, and it's Kyle Busch. Yeah. I, that's I think that's the reason I didn't go with Kyle. Cause it I it seems like it's too easy, but I think he is going to dominate this. I think he's going, I think potentially 10 win season. That's kind of where I have Kyle Bush at this year for his ceiling. Yeah. That's pretty good guess. And he better get it done at Homestead because I tell you what, Kyle's still a young guy, but the years of him racking up multiple titles are slipping away. He's got to start doing it. He's got to start getting him now. He's if he wants to be considered an all timer and he wants to make a make a push to be on the Mount Rushmore someday, he's got to start getting more of these. He's got to rack up some, and it's got to start right now. Um, so. I want to just look at something really quick here. Jimmy Johnson has one single Camping World Truck Series or Gander Outdoors yeah, Truck Series one start. start. Yep. At Bristol. He made one start at Bristol. He started ninth. He finished 34th in an accident. Yes. So that is all we know about Jimmy Johnson in a truck series style package. All we know about Kyle Busch is he's the greatest truck series driver. <laughs> right. Uh, five laps to go. Things are getting racy. A little bit racy. By racy, I mean uh, Austin Dillon and Jamie McMurray were side by side for a second. Now they're single file again. So. Jamie Mack trying to go out in style. Yeah. I, I don't know who – I think Austin tried to pass Jamie and went backwards because Austin's sounds... down on the bottom. So, yeah, Austin's trying to go to the inside of him. Four laps to go. I think, wow. we, te we, think we tear some cars up here at the end. Usually there's at least I... one wreck in these things. Yeah, I hope not. We don't need to tear cars up in the duels. Yeah. I think Boyer's got the win. He's out front. Well, Hamlin's second, though. 
We'll see what happens here. We're gonna keep reco- might as well keep recording the podcast. Yeah, until, we might as well. Yeah, we we'll, we'll get through our pre. Hey, let's do our 500 preview. Oh, yeah, by that's the time right. We gotta do it. the 500 preview, don't we? Yeah. Well, we'll do a little. Uh... A little, uh, well, I guess, what are we going to say about the 500? It's a, it's a 500 mile race. It's this Sunday. Yeah, it's in Daytona. I think that's in Florida. Yeah. yeah. Um, rumor, rumor has it that the weather is supposed to be good the rest of the weekend. So that's good. That's always good. Um, hopefully we have no delays because the 500 has historically had some major delays in the past. Yeah, no potholes, no yeah. rain, no jet dryers. We don't, we can't hit a jet dryer anymore. Okay, we'll jet dryer, please. So you could hit an air titan. I think it would be less destructive. Here comes Chase Elliott to the inside. Look underneath <laughs> Ryan Blaney for fifth place. <laughs> you're living your dream, man. You're calling your race live. Yeah. You're calling it's live. I would just put the audio up, but I don't want to get a takedown notice from Fox, so I'm trying to keep they, that down for the most. They might, be, they might be angry with you. Yeah, and now Chase Elliott is going backwards. <laughs> uh, Chase Elliott's sneaky really bad at restrictor plate racing. Yeah. Remember, I remember last year very fondly. I came on the podcast screaming about how bad he was at <laughs> restrictor plate racing. Yeah, yeah. So, I almost felt bad because I buried him. It how, was not. Nice. How do you get first pick? Didn't you get first pick last week? Oh uh, yeah, you should probably get the first pick this what week. What a jerk! See how you are. Well, I got the I got the championship pick, so you can have it. I'll all give right, it to you. All right. I don't really know who I'm. Actually, I do know who I'm going to pick. Um, no, I don't. Hold on, let me go back here. I thought I knew who I was going to pick. <clears throat> hmm. So my pick for the Daytona 500, I'm going to go out on a limb. It's got to be somebody. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a normal guy. I'm no, gonna, it's been kind of a wild card lately. I, I This could probably be a dark horse pick, but I'm going to go William Byron. It's bringing a fast piece. Yeah, I say William Byron gets it done. He gets he can find himself in the right spot at the end of the race and gets the win. For some reason, I feel Chevy snuck through and got the win last year. I feel like Chevy's going to do it again this year. I feel like the Fords are going to are going to look really good and then just not have it at the end. Man, I would have given you that as the dark horse pick. I know. I I don't want to take him as a dark horse. So I don't. I just don't. I have a hard time with Byron as a dark horse. I don't know. I just feel like he's gonna he's gonna graduate a little bit this year and and yeah. show some improvement. So yeah, I think so. I think the new rules package is going to benefit him pretty well. And it's it's Daytona. It's a crapshoot. Yes. Last lap. <laughs> Was that it? Was that the checkered? <laughs> Hold on, I want to pick my change my pick for the Daytona 500. <laughs> <laughs> Led all the laps and got passed by his teammate. Great job, Joey and TJ. Way to get it done. This year he only Thank needed to lead one. Joey Logano wins. Did you see that Last lap pass. There you go. I did not see it. Hold on. I'm going to skip back here and see what happened because. Really good restrictor player. Racer he was well. going to be my pick, too, and I didn't go that way. So. It's, he can't do this by himself. Now I went back three laps. Yeah, all you had to do was fill a, you had to filibuster for like 10 seconds. I know. Two to go. Boyer's leading. <laughs> all right, anyway, what's your pick, James? Uh, oh, yeah, he dove so under Boyer pick, go... on the white flag lap going into turn one. Blaney, he knifed Darryl. it in there to get in behind. All right, anyway. Daryl's in uh, mid-season form already. Of course. It sounds like <laughs> grief. Uh, so I'm going to go a little bit out on a limb. Um, I, Normally, every restricted place, I have a rule. You pick Brad Keselowski. <laughs> however, however, I'm not going to do that this time. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Eric Jones. I'm going to kind of mimic you a little bit. Kind of okay. go... Better, but he won. Uh, he won the last Daytona race in July. So, Eric Jones. I like that. And I think he is going to have a monster season too. I really was considering him as a, like a Final Four dark horse, but I think he might need one more season under his belt. And then we got the dark horse. You get first. Good. You got. I'm going to steal. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to steal this one. It's Jamie Mack. Okay. Good. I'm glad you went it's that way because I'm going a different one. That would be awesome. Man, I would love to see Jamie Mack win this race. It, it, it's Jamie McMurray, by the way. I know. Not I, Mack. I, over. <laughs> Sorry, you guys can't see James typing. I can't. I, I can't even spell his last name. No, perfectly. man, that's that's horrible. Yeah, got it. <laughs> All right. I am I am going Bubba Wallace. Uh, that's a good one. Because yep. it's one of the few places I can pick Bubba Wallace as a potential winner. This and Bristol probably are about my only ones. So going Bubba. I was, yep. was going to throw uh, – throw Daniel Hemrick out there just as, you know, what the heck, you know, 
toss yeah. out, but I'll go Bubba. I think that's a little bit more qualified choice. So yes. I like that one. Here we go. We predicted the 2019 season. We predicted the first week, James. There we go. There we go. There I, we're back. We're back to it. I'm going to make sure to end this show properly this week because I completely bombed that last week. It was a mess. Ah, huh, yeah. Like a freaking rookie. I'm going to let you. <laughs> all right. Let's see if you got it. Oh, well, first of all, the, you got first of all, I will ask the question. Do we have any shout outs with knowing the answer that I do have one? Um, do you have, one do you have any James before I get to mine? I think, I think we have the same one. Yeah, we do. Uh, let me all right. I'm going to let you care. All right. So we have a new patron. Uh, big thanks to Ranger Runyon for signing up and tweeting out that he likes our show and that people should be listening to it. Uh, we love that. So thanks, Ranger, for Heck joining yeah, us. That's awesome. Yeah. So very cool. Um, I believe. Do we know if Ranger's one of them signed up for the for the? Uh, I League? cannot. Yeah, I cannot confirm that one. Um, we have. We did have a few signups, but uh, I'll, I'll give you guys the information in just a second. I don't know if he did, but if he didn't, get on that. Yeah, sign up, go, Ranger. For... You got time yet? Yeah. So uh, so for anybody who wants to join the fantasy league this year, um, we're doing uh, we're doing everything through NASCAR Fantasy Live because Eric. Is a diva and requires an ass. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's actually no. Nice. It's it's true. Actually, it it is pretty nice though. It really is. Um, so we have a link on our Facebook page. Just go to our just go to our Facebook page and scroll uh, scroll down the feed. It's right there. Um, and this the password is all one word. The Super Speedway 2019. I have it all on Facebook for you. Um, there's still time. You can join before the start of the Daytona 500, and then uh, we're off and rolling. There you go. Just had to throw that in there. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, join us in the Fantasy League. Uh, if you have trouble signing up, just fire us a message. Actually, better yet, if you have trouble signing up, fire James a message on our Facebook page because yeah. uh, for some reason I have a terrible time signing up for these things too. So the way I understand it, the way I figured it out on my end, because I know a couple of people were talking to me and they were having trouble, I believe you have to have an account first. Or use your face. Yeah, or it'll give you an option to use your Facebook profile. Yeah, so, so you basically want to set up your team kind of and then – Follow the link that gets you to our um, join page, and then you can join yeah. from there. Here's the thing with the NASCAR website and app and everything: nothing's going to work as easy as it should. Right. That's yeah. just that's the life of the NASCAR website. Right. Sorry, sorry, anybody who's from NASCAR listening. Yes. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Um, <laughs> no matter how many times the ownership of the site has changed hands to a different group that is managing it, um, it has continued to kind of go the wrong direction. <laughs> so. Yes. Um, NASCAR's media site, freaking awesome. NASCAR's actual site, eh, I'm happy they have a web page. I'll tell yes. you what, I am depending on a lot more now. <laughs> Jayski's gone than I yes. than I used to. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Every once in a while, but, I click back to Jayski's page. I'm like, is there something new there? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a bummer. <laughs> I know. Well, come on and join us though. Seriously, uh, it's fun. Uh, you can you know kick our butts every week and then hop on one of the social sites and and uh, give us a hard time yeah we're, we're all we're all for that speaking of joining us if uh if you want to join ranger runyon and be a patron uh find us at patreon.com slash the super speedway uh you can sign up there there's all kinds of different tiers uh any support we appreciate but uh the support you give us allows us to get to the track uh get to cover some stuff maybe throw some extra features on the show um i don't know pay james for travel so he can do a live podcast with me instead of having to do it over skype you know that sort of thing <laughs> right <laughs> I thought about making the trip down to you today after the duels, but it had been so late. I mean, now the duels yeah, are over, but yeah. oh, it, we're yeah. pretty late right now for normal. So let's let's wrap this sucker up. Um, meanwhile, James, where can they find you on social media during the week? At James Cush on Twitter. You can find me at T Super Speedway. You can find the podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash the super speedway. Our website is www.thesuperspeedway.com. Check it out for all kinds of past coverage of races. We'll have the show notes up there, uh, links to stuff we talked about, and some other little goodies here and there. So check out the site. Hopefully more this year. We'll see. It, you know, work in real life gets in the way. So, um, hey, sign up as a patron. You can have us uh, maybe work a little bit more towards that site. So, um, again, thesuperspeedway.com. You can find the podcast. Uh, you can find the podcast also on iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud. Um, wherever you're listening now, we hope you subscribe and once again become a patron at patron patreon.com slash the super speedway. With that, the duels are done. The field is set for the Daytona 500. It's racing the rest of the weekend. 
We got the Truck Series Friday night. We got the Xfinity Series Saturday. We've got the Cup Race on Sunday. The NASCAR racing season is here. The 2019 season is here. The new season of the podcast is here. If you haven't seen it, we have new cover art, which is one of my <laughs> photos from the start of the June NASCAR race at MIS last year. I don't know. Everything's new except for the intro and the same two hosts that are the same. mediocre at best. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said it. I didn't even have to try to fill it in. Yep. <laughs> There you go. So anyway, we appreciate you joining us. We hope you join us the rest of the season. And it is finally time, ladies and gentlemen, to go racing. Uh-huh.